Hey there, today I want to talk about the age old debate overhead versus drip irrigation. Well, this is a highly debated and discussed topic and no real definitive answer, and it's very contextual. So, before I get into it, I just want to say that I've done a really comprehensive video about irrigation and how I set up my systems. I'll put a link up here. I'll also put one down below if you want to click on it after watching this video. So please don't ask me questions about irrigation in this video. There's way super detailed information in that video. So let's get into it. Well, I'll give you my bias up front. I am a big fan of overhead irrigation whenever I can use it. I just find it to be a little bit more simple and a little bit easier to work with but there's pros and cons of both and I wanna go through all of them to help you make your decision as you're setting up your irrigation system or maybe wanna make adjustments with them. I love overhead for a few reasons. One is uh, if you're doing high rotation crops and you're turning the beds over four or five times a year, you don't have to deal with drip tape, pulling it out to flip beds, so that's a huge bonus. The other thing is it's super simple. So I'm using two wobblers here to uh, water eight different beds and so that works out pretty well. And so it's just super simple. And that's part of the reasons I love overhead is just the simplicity of it. The things that it's really great for, uh, it's really good to water crops that are just direct seeded. So getting them to germinate is really helpful with overhead. Also in the summertime, it's great for cooling down the crops in the middle of the day. So leafy greens and things like that in the summertime will get kind of wilty in the middle of the day during the summer heat. So you can give them a little bit of a blast of water just to cool down the leaves just a little bit. So that's another benefit. But generally, I mean, those are the things that I love. Um, there are places you don't want to use overhead irrigation. They're not great for tall crops, right? Because let's say you're growing to, like tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, sweet corn, um, eggplant, peppers, you know, things that get really tall, the overhead is not going to be able to clear everything. So it's really for low growing stuff. Um, if you do want to squeeze in some tall stuff, put it at the end of your block and that way it'll just water towards the base of it and not be blocking uh, irrigation to beds behind it. So that's something you really have to consider with the, uh, with the overhead. All right, let's talk about drip irrigation. It is awesome for certain applications. I really love it for doing stuff, like I mentioned before, taller crops, so tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, cucumbers, things where they don't need a lot of water on the leaves, you wanna get the water in the roots. And so that works out really well. Also, as I said, with overhead, you can't be spraying you know, blocks of tomatoes unless the irrigation is like really high up, but generally that's not the case. And you don't want to be spraying the leaves of tomatoes if you can help it as well. So that works really well for this. Things I don't like about drip is it's a lot of plastic and they break down, they wear out, they rip, um, they break, and it just winds up being a lot of plastic that goes in the landfill and that sucks. Um, I've also cut drip, like I'd be harvesting something with a knife and I cut it by accident because I'm clumsy. And so then you have to replace it and that's a pain in the butt too. Um, Cost-wise, I'd say drip might be a little bit more expensive just because and it will depend on what kind of fittings you use. Um, if you don't use a lot of quick quick disconnect fittings uh, and you do kind of di more DIY stuff. Um, also, depending on how many lines you put in per bed, like right now we only have two lines per bed because we're doing um, eggplants, tomatoes, and cucumbers in here. But if you're doing other crops, you might want to have three or four lines. So that kind of adds up for the drip tape. Um, lots of different kinds of drip tape and stuff, but this is, uh, really simple stuff. It's got the emitters inside the tape. And yeah, it works great for some applications for sure. Uh, it uses a lot less water too. And that's something to consider. So if you're at a place where you really need to conserve your water usage, I know I was visiting some farms out in California and water's crazy expensive. So there's only gonna use overhead for very small applications. Uh, so because it drops water right at the point of the roots where you want them, you use a little bit less water. And you think about overhead, it doesn't, it doesn't spray water just on the bed itself, right? It, it spreads water a little bit further than the bed. So there's a little bit of wastage there and you're also watering the walkways and stuff. So something to consider. I'm standing in front of our timer setup over here. And there's a couple other things I want to mention about this here is that depending on your flow rate and your pressure, you might want to decide one or the other. Overhead needs more gallons per minute or higher flow rate. And it also needs a little bit higher pressure. So if you're in a situation where you have a very low flow rate or pressure, I'd probably go with drip. Uh, drip needs, from what I understand, between eight and 15 PSI. I'm running mine at 10, so I have a, a pressure regulator here at 10 PSI. And the overhead, I am running at a higher pressure. Um, I'm just using the pressure that's here, but you could also dial that back as well. So things to consider. I mean, if you need to water a lot at once and you wanna do like one main zone, then drip's probably better for you. Of course, if you add 
lots and lots of drip, the flow rate will add up, but it's a pretty low rate compared to overhead. Another factor to consider is the wind. If it's super windy where you are, overhead's not gonna work because as soon as that sprinkler start running, it just it's gonna go everywhere. So if it's super windy where you are, drip's probably the better option. Another thing to think about in terms of drip versus overhead is your soil type. Now, if you have a very sandy soil, for example, it drains really quickly. And so when you use drip, the, dr the droplets of water will just kind of run right through the ground and not really saturate and spread out. You want to soak the ground as sort of a way that the drip works. So in that case, you probably want to use overhead and use it more often. So soil type matters too. You can do some trials and see what works best for you guys. And if you guys are curious, this uh, trellis system, super easy. I've done a video on it. Most of you guys have probably seen it, but if you haven't, check it out here. If you guys need a trellis system for this year, super easy, super cheap. It's awesome. Next question you guys probably have is, how about inside of a high tunnel or greenhouse, what should you use? Generally, I think drip is better in a tunnel. And I have overhead set up here because it was kind of a quick setup for when we first got rolling in here. And I, my irrigation system is very portable. So we're gonna be converting this over to, uh, to drip pretty soon as we change over these crops into summer crops. Uh, early, we did some direct seeding in here and overhead was super quick to set up and I already had some of the parts, so it was a little bit cheaper. Um, I've seen different setups for overhead and tunnels. Obviously, if you have a much bigger tunnel, it's a little bit easier to irrigate with overhead. If you're using like a farmer's friend tunnel or just a three, four bed wide tunnel, might be tricky with, with overhead. Uh, they do make um, mid-angle wobblers and also mini wobblers. I've seen some people using that. They also have um, a, an overhead irrigation system that hangs upside down that works really great. Um, and so that's another option for you guys if you really do want to use overhead in the tunnel or if you're growing greens in here in the summer and you want to cool them down so you want to just mist them a couple times a day, you could use a setup like that. So there's a lot of options in here, but generally uh, I do like drip just because when you're using overhead, it starts spraying everywhere hitting the ceiling, uh, hitting the walls, dripping all over the place. And so it's just a little more accurate inside the tunnel. And so, I don't know, I do generally like drip inside the tunnel. It's one place I really do prefer drip. Well, how about both? Can you have both drip and overhead on your farm? And the answer is absolutely yes. So there's two ways you can think about this. One is like here, we have different blocks set up for different things. So the blocks over here is all overhead. The blocks, the block over here is all drip. And so we're growing crops that uh, are more suited for growing with drip over here and the ones that are more suited for using overhead over here. And if you need a little bit more flexibility, you could actually install both systems in the same block. Yeah, of course, there's a bigger overhead expense there in setting it up, but then it gives you ultimate flexibility. So you could use the overhead when you're direct seeding crops or when you're trying to cool crops down. Uh, and then you can use drip the rest of the time when you're trying to uh, you know, conserve water and things like that. So I've definitely seen that on other farms where they have both on the same plot. And that's just the ultimate set situation, both uh, out in the field and in the tunnel. So a lot of different options there, guys. Well, like most things in farm, the answer is it depends. And it's very contextual. So it really depends on what you got going on in your farm, things you're growing, soil, all sorts of different things. But these are all things to help you make your decision about if you're using drip, overhead, or both. As I said, a uh, great video about my complete setup with all the parts, super detailed. I'll leave a link down below. I'll also leave a link down below for a video I did with Luke at 10 Mothers Farm. He goes through their irrigation system. So you guys might want to check that out too. It's kind of similar, but you know, there's some subtleties there and you can sort of get another opinion about it and see how it works on someone else's farm. And if you guys are looking for parts for irrigation, uh, I really like Drip Depot. I'll leave a link down below as well. No affiliation with them whatsoever. I just have ordered from them and have had good luck. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, also hit the bell, be greatly appreciated. We'll see you in the next one.